So, Michael, if you want to know about the birds. Let, let, let's let's get back to that question later. I, we're okay. Chad's supposed to be starting the recording now. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Chad. Welcome all to uh, season two, episode seven, to the Warwick Zoom Garden Plot. Oh, we had to be a little Warwick part. Uh, good to see you, Jim. Thank you. Jim's been great sending me all that great uh, email information. And his daughter is a big part of our team. What time? Uh, I guess I'll wait another minute or two for people to uh, come in. Okay, so I will go back to my question then if you want to wait a couple minutes. So this is quasi gardening question. So we had never had trouble with the birds. Um, flying into our windows. And then this year, one bird, not the kitchen window, it was like the living room window. And okay, so we sort of closed the blinds and he stopped doing it. But then the same bird went to the back of the house and started flying at the basement window. There's sort of like a little, you know, casement, is casement that's the word I want? You know, the little, mm -hmm. it's like, he started flying at that. Okay, covered that one. They came out front and he started flying at the casement window out front below the, the living room window. So has anyone heard of a crazy bird like that before? I mean, so it's like, it seems yeah. to me it's the same, the same Robin. Now, if, if it was like, you know, several birds and they miss, you know, misperceived what was going on in like one window and they all kept flying at the same window. Okay, I would decorate the window. And it just seems like it's the same bird who's intent on getting into our house. But has anyone... Is this we have, we have a robin that does exactly the same thing this year. There are birds that do like the human contact. I think they see their reflection, right? And they are they don't want to have another robin uh, near the mm -hmm. nest, and so they fly up and they just flat, you know, they go out the window. Yeah, and uh, we had a cardinal who did that once as well, but this year the robin did it for about five days and uh, drove us crazy, and it finally stopped. I don't know why, but it's out there, but it's not flying against the window anymore. And and did he do multiple windows? Yes. We, okay. covered one, we covered one window, he went to a different window. We covered that window, he went to another window. Yeah. It must be the worms. There's something in the worms. <laughs> well, you guys weren't eating, you didn't have like worms on the dinner table or something, right? That they were trying, you, you like tempting them? Yeah, maybe it's the pesticides and the worms you're eating. I don't know. It's not my pesticides, but I've heard of the same thing happening. Not maybe to me. He's, maybe he's got people. a drinking problem. <laughs> okay, everyone, welcome. I think we'll uh, begin. Uh, again, season two, episode seven. I like that. It feels like a sitcom. And again, you could always see these on the Sustainable Warwick website. And uh, where else, Michael? There's a, I always forget, there's some other man that chose oh, the- Oh, they're, uh, they're posted on YouTube. And actually on Sustainable Warwick, we just linked to the YouTube post, Peter Hall from- Peter Hall. Post them for us. No Thanks relation to, to Jim, right? All right, welcome. And then um, we're gonna go over today's agenda. We have garden updates from Yours truly and Bill Kowski. Uh, then we'll do question and answers, resources and announcements. Uh, I probably should have updated the resources a little bit more, but I'll do a little more research into that as we move along. And we will start with me. And not my personal garden, but our Grow Local Greenwood Lake Common Ground Community Garden. And um, Hopefully you can see these pictures well. You can see that first picture on the left, that is the lot as it was, a nice empty lot that was uh, Mayor Jesse Dwyer offered to us since it uh, has a high water table and you cannot build on it. So I was talking to him about, you know, just improving uh, local food access and, uh, you know, anything we could do to improve the village. And he offered this and I said, yes. And then the second picture you see we're bringing in tons of compost and uh, topsoil and wood chips. We had, a, and everyone was very helpful. The town of Warwick and Greenwood Lake, everyone is very helpful to uh, bring those things with us. And then you see this third picture. We are, uh, you know, again, this is, 
I don't even know, March, April, we are building the mounds of soil. And then we have, uh, we tried uh, to do a little- Chad, we, Chad yes. someone mentioned, could you make your presentation full screen? And so I think what you wanna do is go up, you see where it says view on the upper left? I could be wrong about that. Yes. Go to view. No, I want to do it also, but I'm afraid to do anything that will uh, throw and then me off. Oh, there we go. Present. Let's see? Full screen. Here. Here, Kayla. Does that help? I press full screen. Is that better? Mm hmm Okay. Uh, there was another option there, present, and I think then we wouldn't see your slides down the left. Oh. Uh-oh. How do I get back out of there now? Press, es press escape first. Yeah. Okay, and now go, go to uh, go view and present the first one there. Oh, right in front of me. No. See, I'm trying, I'll get the. I'll forget this. Well, for the next time. There you go. There um, you go. And we did a little project with the Boy Scouts. There's my son right next to me. We planted peas in a little mound. And here's the next picture. They're coming in very nicely. We have. Uh, Peas coming all down the line, like tons of snap peas. Then we have these wonderful people here in this picture uh, who gave us a very generous, wonderful uh, donation for Sustainable Warwick to uh, help us build out our garden. And as you can see, this is the fence. We were, we're, we're still waiting. Fencing is very hard to get. Home Depot doesn't seem to have this, you know, we want to do six foot fence. And I've been, I've had orders, orders canceled three times now. I've been, I've been there like six different times. Hopefully the true value by us is hopefully going to get it in this week, but it seemed very difficult to get a lot of items in. It's like survival of the fittest. And uh, last week we planted all the warm weather stuff. We have, you know, we put tomatoes in. I probably could have showed a few more pictures of, uh, you know, we put everything in. So we have about 20 beds. And, uh, you know, so as you know, Sarah's way years ahead of us, but we're, you know, we're just, we're just building everything from, from scratch. So it's, it's, you know, it's challenging to, you know, build the garden as you're also trying to plant. So, you know, I have, like, I have my construction work days and then, you know, just people weeding and doing other stuff, but we are moving along. Um, you know, hopefully we'll, the neighbors aren't that thrilled about us at this early stage, but, you know, that's, that is one issue of having a garden in a residential block. Um, but I'm hoping, because, you know, this is the early stages. So there's a lot of, you know, dumping of wood chips and cutting of wood. So, you know, I could understand it looks a little chaotic. But I'm hoping the next few weeks we're going to finish up the garden, you know, finish up the fence, you know, have the parking set up and, you know, start looking much nicer. And we're, we're going to plant a lot of perennials on the outside of the uh, members of the area. So hopefully make it very beautiful and you know try to get a lot of native uh, interesting plants to put all around there um and that's uh that's where we're at that's my update any questions or uh comments no? all right uh bill if you're ready we're gonna yeah. go to your update i don't you know so I, I i hope i put them in the correct order but it doesn't just, matter they were random pictures, so it, it, the order doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, the one on the left uh, shows uh, peas, and I have a six foot fence. And I have a, I, I don't know if anybody's interested in this kind of method, but I have some metal stakes that are six feet tall, and I have the electrical conduit, the, the either three quarters of one inch electrical conduit uh, uh, wired to the top. And then I just throw over the, the nylon uh, netting and uh, use some U-pins to put it into the ground on either side. It, it goes up really quickly. So if you're looking for a method to do tall peas, these, these are gonna be six feet tall probably. So, so anyway, th those are the standard sugar snaps. And then there's the, um, the other one, which are tall, which are the, the um, snow peas. So we have them both. Uh, this is a, another, okay, on the right now is a picture from my fence, uh, my garden gate. And there's several things. I have some peppers uh, out here 
and I have eggplant that are covered up in remade because the eggplant get a lot of insect damage. And I try to keep them covered as long as possible just to prevent the flea beetles from moving right in and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Not that they won't anyway. Uh, this other bed right here is just a strawberry bed and, and they actually we're, we're picking strawberries already, which is rather early this year, but they're, they're coming. So we had like three or four yesterday. Uh, beyond that is another pea bed. This is a smaller bed, but we put it in early. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's, there's loads of pods on there already. They're not quite ready, but they should be ready in another week or so. Um, and those are just have short stakes with some cord uh, and, and a few um, sticks to, to keep them upright. There's, a lot of peas say they don't need support. Don't believe it. I haven't met a pea yet that doesn't want support, okay? And then in the background there, oh. um, oops. No, that was here, me. You see another big thing of remake. This is brassicas, uh, the early brassicas that I put in. Again, uh, I'm keeping the, the cabbage moths off of it. And uh, I'm also using uh, some of this super sluggo stuff at the base of each of the plants because uh, you know, you, you will get slugs getting in there and other bugs that will love brassicas. Brassicas are, are like the spring treat for many insects. Okay. Wait, Bill, sorry, what, what did you mention? Super sluggo? What is, what is that? It's, it's like sluggo, which is just for slugs, but super sluggo is a, one that's supposed to be for other insects that do the same kind of damage that eat the leaves and the stem. And it's for uh, the... God, what are the different bugs? The, the roly-poly bugs, I call them, but they have a different name, pill bugs. And mm -hmm. also there's other, other ones that are affected by this. The stuff is harmless. It's, 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 a, it's an, a mineral and they eat it and then uh, they don't eat any more. So- um, So what, what is it, sorry, is it like a solid, is it a liquid? What is it, like little things you drop pellets. around? It's little, oh. It comes in pellets. Oh, pellets. Okay. Every, every garden catalog sells some. You know, they sell the regular sluggo and they sell the super sluggo. Uh, I don't see why you would use regular sluggo when super sluggo does slugs and everything else too. So, okay, uh, next. Uh, this shows a potato bed and uh, I keep them about a foot apart and plant them about eight, eight inches deep. And now they're coming up and I'm, I'm just about to start mulching them. And I'm, I'm gonna put the soil back in around them and, and then put straw in there. Uh, so I got pretty good germination there as you would expect because they came as, uh, as sets. You know, I just cut them up. I cut regular potatoes up with a little eye in each one and just planted it uh, about eight inches down and covered it with maybe two inches of soil and then uh, water it and let it grow up. Uh, potatoes are really easy to grow. I mean, they may not give you great production. I don't get great production, but they're, they're really, they do grow, okay. Uh, there's no potato beetles yet, but I expect them with the warm weather that we're having, I expect to see them shortly. Okay. Um, trying to decide what I'm seeing here. Um, yeah, what did I say about your towels? Please hang them up. That picture there is one that I sent in. Oh, okay. That's why I didn't recognize. Oh, I missed. You. Sorry, I, I, I mixed them up. Sorry. About that. I'm saying, boy, this doesn't look like mine. But it isn't. Oh well, keep your eye on that. All right. So I, yeah, so I guess I said I, I recognize it. Then I'd really be crazy. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I guess I might have left one of yours out. Yeah, <clears throat> so that's, that's it then. Uh, I did have one other one, but uh, anyway, the other bugs that are coming out right now due to the warm weather, there's cucumber beetles starting to show up <coughs> and, uh, and flea beetles starting to show up. Flea beetles mostly go right for the eggplant <clears throat> and cucumber beetles go on mostly zucchini and cucumbers, but they'll go on other things too. And uh, 
if people have good methods of dealing with them, let me know because uh, I always fight them and I always lose. Uh, I do have a, a cucumber beetle trap uh, that has a lure in it. Uh, it's, a, it's a yellow sticky trap and it, it, it has a cucumber uh, beetle lure. And um, that, that picks up quite a few of them. And the flea beetles are always a problem. I can't catch them by hand, they're too fast. Um, I do use sticky traps for those, but they always seem to get, get uh, you know, out of control eventually. So I, that's why I cover the, the eggplant early and then, um, then put the sticky traps in. And then I try to water them a lot because they don't, when they nest in the soil, they don't like a lot of wet. So I, I do water them a lot. That seems to reduce the population a little. But if somebody has a, other methods that work for flea beetles or cucumber beetles, now is the moment. Jim, what about you? No, nothing. He's on mute. I'm sorry. Oh. No, he's not. Okay. No, okay. All right. Uh, we'll move on to some questions. And and it's funny, Bill Bill touched on most of our questions in his uh mm. his uh, run through. So this is from Michelle. Do you want to read this one, uh, Michelle? Yeah, um, you know, I was under the impression, I, I don't know what I was thinking, they wiped out a row of radishes. I wasn't aware it was roly polies or pill bogs at that point. Um, they moved on to some of my squashes. I was mortified and I started using a barrier method. I put little plastic cups around each individual plant because apparently they don't climb up and over. So that seemed to help and I removed some of them by hand and then I noticed that they were in this picture um beginning to right where the center of that um trellis is they wiped out a mature kale and I was really upset at this point it was a two-year-old kale beautiful big plant it was just killed overnight somebody said put out banana peel use it as a lure and then you can physically remove them because I was removing them you know, handfuls, just throwing them over the fence. Bill, so I'm, I'm curious um, about the um, sluggo that you, super sluggo. Super, super that you sluggo. Mentioned. I looked it up on mm -hmm. Amazon and I see something called sluggo plus. Is that the same That's thing? That's the same thing, yep. Okay. They call so, it different names. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would prefer if I can to not kill them and just remove them and bait them and trap them and, you know, prevent sort of physical barriers between me and the roly polies because they do serve a purpose. You know, they are um like Sarah's like no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's like off the heads. It's <laughs> like a big body hogger. Vegetarian can't kill anything. I pick them up and move them to the other end, one acre down the hill. Okay. <laughs> um, they, they reproduce really quickly. So in terms of moving them, I don't know if that helps at all. And they do have a big population. They really grow rapidly. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. If you just put this, the super sluggo and sluggo plus just, just around the uh, bottom of the plant, uh, I'm sure you'll still have pill bugs running around the garden, and but you'll get rid of the ones that were eating your plant. So. And I never, I honestly never had a problem until I decided to follow the um, advice of the moment, which is use your leaf mold. <laughs> there was no problem until the leaf mold came into contact with my vegetables because they hitched a ride in that leaf mold. Mm -hmm. and now I have a problem. Now the pill bugs do have a, a purpose. They remove heavy metals that can't be removed from the soil. They are excellent at doing that. So, right, so I, hear, I hear what Michelle's saying. You know, every every that is has their a main purpose. purpose in life is to, to yeah to devour and basically defuse heavy metals. Yeah, I prefer to not kill them, but they are a problem at this point. Just send well, arrow. They, they can be, just like, just like any other insect. 
even beneficial ones can be a problem at times. Has, it, has anyone else had that issue using leaf mold? Because I've used it all the time and I've never had that problem. Is that something peculiar to her leaf stash? I don't know. I just, I think they're everywhere. You can also put uh, like boards down on top of the soil and they will go under there and then you can pick them, you know, you can turn the board over. Mm -hmm. You'll have to squish them, Michelle. Or, or you can carry the board to the fence and just flip them over the fence. <laughs> that would be another way. I was literally t scooping handfuls of pill bugs and throwing them and they were flying over my kitchen garden fence. <laughs> yeah. It was okay, they'll find their way back. <laughs> Probably. You know, I, we have like so terrible easy to okay, problems, yeah. problems but I, would, I don't have pill bug, pill bug problems. So you keep them. <laughs> Flea beetles are a nightmare. You know, it depends a lot on conditions. I think under certain conditions, they, they reproduce faster. So it differs from year to year, but you always have some, but sometimes they're really bad and sometimes they're not. That makes and, sense, thank you. Yeah. Well, Michael, maybe you could lend her your, uh, some of your birds to help eat them. <laughs> the birds eat them? The the flea beetles? I've never seen them. Eat. No, I guess the pill bugs. Maybe I was pill thinking. Pill bugs. Pill bugs. And then they get all the toxic metals, and that isn't good for the birds. That's true. The best well, remedy I've found for flea beetles is Captain Jack's, but you have to spray it on every day. It's Captain Jack's is supposed to be a uh, organic pesticide, but I have to use it every day. But it does work on the flea beetles. You just have to use it every single day. Hmm. Really? Yeah. What is the name? So of the that's the only way I was able to have eggplants because the flea beetles was with Captain Jack. I gave up on eggplant altogether and just live with the little holes in the arugula. Now you you can use DE, um, the diamethysis earth. Um, I was just gonna I was just gonna mention that. Mm -hmm. Buy it at a pool. It gets under the exoskeleton of the pill bugs and uh, others that have a very hard scaly skin and it basically just irritates them to death. Sorry about that, but it is organic uh, and it's basically ground up bugs, ancient bugs. Does it's a lot work? cheaper to buy it at Does that work for flea beetles stores Ooh. than it is to buy it at a garden store? I'm sorry? Does that work for flea beetles too? <clears throat> it works for pill bugs, you said, but yes. for flea beetles as well. Any of them that have an excess, any of them that, I'm sorry, any of them that have an exoskeleton. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I've heard it. I, I was gonna I swear I was just gonna I was just gonna mention that that that's uh, that's a good option. But you yeah, should I no, bet that you should be very careful in terms of breathing it. No, I don't yes. know. Yeah. Go, go to the pool. Uh, yes, yeah, so you don't. You don't, you don't want to breathe that in because it could irritate your. Uh... All yeah, right, it, it uh... will irritate your lungs. I just made. A, I just put through this in there. It's not even a question, but I was so. I'm, I was very proud. Hopefully, this will work. I'm. I never do this prematurely, but like on my peach tree, and my apple tree. I don't. It's very hard to see. I wrapped, uh, you know, I was upset last year. I didn't get one single peach. And like, they were just so tempting mm. You see them coming in. And, and then the squirrels and birds literally got every one. And just, I laughed at me as I, as I ate them in front of my face and I was just tortured. <laughs> but so I, I, was, I was, I tried to buy a uh, row cover and that was not working because the tree's kind of tall. It was a big mess. So I hope this works. So I decided to get thread and I, I like literally wrap both of these trees up for like for like an hour, just all these different circling underneath around. So I'm hoping it'll, you know, when the squirrel goes up or the bird will just kind of, you know, bounce into this invisible thread. And I will let you know how it goes. But so far they're around longer than they were last year. I've just had a, I had to mention this. This was a very, uh, uh, I thought it could be an ingenious solution. I hope I, you know, I could be crying a few weeks from now, but as of now, this could be a nice, simple way of uh, avoiding that. Do you have a dog? I do not have a dog or a cat. 
my dog is very devoted to chasing birds and squirrels. Uh, it, <laughs> you know, you can I like them around, but it keeps them, you know, a little bit off the ground and keeps the squirrel out of the bird feeder. <laughs> um, my, my dog did not serve well. I lost peaches every single year, 100% of my peaches, until I put a net up last year. And the net, I had like 300 peaches for the first time last oh, year. Oh, nice. But nice. Um, my daughter wants to kill me because I two birds got trapped. Um, so now I put up CDs all over the net <laughs> and fingers crossed that no more birds will come in. But somebody mentioned, I thought it was squirrels, but they said that the way that overnight every peach disappeared, it could have been a bear. I don't know. No, I, I don't get, this I don't have bears by me. The, the, the years raccoon. before the net. What about raccoons? Raccoons could do it. Raccoons. Particularly a family of raccoons. Uh, but, you know, overnight, there must have been 300 peaches every year that just disappeared and not even a pit on the ground. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that was happening to me. They, I was so frustrated. Wow. But oh, Gail, network. sorry, just to, I don't know if you know this, uh, Kelly Collins just got married. Yes. Yes. To Jeremiah. Yes. They both... I introduced them, but I, I should get full credit for introducing them. I didn't realize they introduced them, but they met at one of my meetings. So. Are they going to stay in Hawaii or come back? It looks like they're staying in Hawaii, as far as I know. What would you do if you had the choice? Yeah, right? <laughs> like, uh, let me think. But, but back to what we were saying about um, squirrels. In previous episodes uh, of the sitcom, we have discussed how a couple of years ago was the mast year for the walnuts and acorns. And so last year, the squirrel population was really high. And a lot of us were observing that this year, there's nothing like last year's squirrel population. Is that, we're continuing to see that? Has anybody? Yeah, that seems to be the case. Last year, the squirrel population in Monroe looked like it was wiped out. There was none. Hmm. Um. I have black walnut trees, so they like live at my house. <laughs> um, well, it's actually just about eight o'clock. So I don't want to make sure we do our famous shimmy in place. It's been a half hour in Michael's tradition. And that's a big part of the sitcom everyone loves to tune in for. So <laughs> we'll take a minute or two and uh, you could stretch. You could shimmy where you are. You could get a little water. You could... Uh, Check on the squirrels, and we'll be right back here in a minute. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Oh. Chad, do you usually moderate? I do not, as you can tell. Why are you moderating tonight? So uh, we're trying to switch it up a little bit, giving uh, me, Michelle, and uh, me and Michelle will go alternate. And maybe Michael will make a guest appearance once in a while. How's the weather been up there? It's been so hot here. It's been hot here. Shanna, did you move? Are you still just across the border? Or are you way down in southern Jersey at this point? 
I'm next to Philadelphia now. So it was like 95 degrees a lot this week. Have you learned how to say Philadelphia yet? Philadelphia, something like that? No, they, that is not how, that's not how they talk, but they do have an accent. <laughs> there is an accent down here. Let's hear, what is it? Let's, let me hear it. Your impression. It's impression very, is. very subtle. It's only on certain words like house. Um, it, it's uh, similar to Canada. It's weird. Uh, it only shows up with that owl sound. About. I used to listen to the You Bet Your Garden podcast, and uh, uh, that was, uh, and, the, and the host of that show was definitely from Philadelphia, and he had a really thick accent. I assumed that was what a Philadelphia accent sounded like. Maybe, I'm, maybe it was just his personal accent. But it's a, good, like... it's, it's a good show. I really, actually, the one thing I really like about our Zoom garden plot is that we're localized. So he had people calling from all over the country and you had people with problems with their lemon trees and whatnot. And, or, you know, he could talk about tomatoes, but it's not like it's, it's third week of June in Warwick and something's happened to my tomatoes and I've got a crew of people with some experience. So that's why I really like our localized garden plot here. And Luckily, I'm, I'm only like two zones different than you. So you guys are in like 6A and I'm in like 7B. Huh? Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I guess he's not here tonight. Um, I heard from Steve Karras, and he, uh, the guy who moved into his place, I gave. I was hoping he would join us tonight. He, uh, he had our. Uh, I gave my info, but maybe next time, just can, so we could see how Steve's garden is doing post Steve. And I told Steve to contact us how he's doing in Florida, which is a very different growing uh, deal. All right, let we, we will continue. All right, and we have, oh, you're gonna go next question. Paula, do you wanna read that question? That's Patricia, isn't it? Oh, Patricia, oh, sorry, sorry, Patricia, what I put Paula. Yeah. Was, no, was it Paula? Is it Patricia De Brule here? Hi, Patricia. Oh. <laughs> when I speak, I have to go out on the, um, the cliff. Yeah, I don't know why it's, it's super poor. That was my question. Yes. You, do you want to read it? When, uh, or do you want me to yeah. read it for you? Well, that was the picture that was from before. Right. Yes, the one on the left, those are potatoes I grew from, you know, seed potatoes. And then the ones on the right, oh. they were from actual seeds <laughs> that I grew. <laughs> you can see the ones I grew from the seed potatoes are doing way better than the ones I grew from the seeds. <laughs> I've never heard of potato seeds before. Where did you get them? What do they look like? Uh, they just were little seeds and I got them from a catalog. I think it might have been I did order yeah. from Johnny's because somebody mentioned Johnny's. Yeah. I think it was that one. But anyway. um, yeah, they yep. they grew, but not very well <laughs> yet. And, yeah, it looks, um, it looks I, almost I, like I, you needed uh, to start uh, them earlier. Marsh, Marsh. Getting a, what are we getting? We're getting a. We're going to be talking about. Sorry. Gonna... It looks almost like you needed to start them earlier because they're from seed. It, it that's what it looks like, but I don't know for certain. Yeah. Well, I did start them indoors weeks ago <laughs> and that's as big as they've got so far like in march yeah yeah okay i'm gonna have to hang up patricia said I'm just you know is it possible you can buy i bought these by mistake they're the garlic seeds yeah. instead of buying seed garlic which is a head of garlic you break up to produce more garlic i bought garlic seeds by mistake and you get a huge amount of them for not that much but the idea is you plant them and let them grow the little bulbs. And then from those little bulbs, you plant them next year. That might be what's happening. Oh. Yeah, I think that's what's going on. They're for commercial growers to, oh. I don't know, but this is what I'm guessing. <laughs> oh, interesting. This, this is kind of what you would expect though, <clears throat> because yeah. the potatoes are just like little onion sets and stuff right. like that. They grow right. fast. They have all of the nutrients in the bulbs themselves mm -hmm. and start from seed 
it just doesn't grow as well. So, I mean, I have onion sets and I have onion plants and the sets grow like four times quicker because, right. the, uh, uh, you know, and you would expect this, this kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. So this is what happens if your potato grows and you let it go to seed and then it, they will actually have an actual seed, right? I guess, it's, right. Yeah, it's, right. yeah, I think I, I was assuming almost, I think I just assumed that people just kept growing in front of the potatoes, but obviously there's a seed to that. That's interesting. And um, I think you wanted some advice, Patricia, right? About uh, mounding as well. Yes, I because it said um, on the bag of potatoes that you mound them up when they get to eight inches. I keep mounding them up and I don't know whether I'm doing it enough. The, the, the ones on the left, should I be mounding it up more? It, like each time it grows, do you keep mounding it up? Yeah, I think that's what you're supposed to do. But what happens is I run out of soil after a while, so I can only mound them so high. But the more you mound them, the more shoots come out and the more potatoes that you get. So yeah, I mound them as much as you can. As long as you keep the top uh, out you know, in the light, it'll continue to grow and it'll con continue to get, give you more potatoes. But I, again, I have limits just because I don't have enough soil to keep mounding them for that long. Okay. And, um, but I, I guess you could also use a uh, straw or. Um, you could use straw. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people use that, right? Because like, after a while you could only have right? soil is not so, you know, to get mapped, you know, tons of, tons of soil. I, I usually, um, you know, start with the soil and I, but then after I use, after that I use most straw. I guess you, you just don't want the potato exposed to the uh, light and, and then the plant will keep on growing higher and then, you know, there seems to be thousands of techniques for growing potatoes, it's, you know, in, bu in buckets and baskets and, or as Michael, if you want to share with Patricia your uh, technique of growing potatoes. Actually, I'm not doing that this year. <laughs> oh, no? What? Are you taking a year off? He heard about the pill bugs and the leaf mold. <laughs> <laughs> no, no um, what happened? I, um, last year just didn't turn out so well, the potatoes. You know, I planted them with a neighbor girl and the, the, the potatoes that came out were just really small and it really, was really, and I'm just sort of trying something different this year. I, yeah, because I, I, is that true that you could, uh, you know, once you grow the potatoes, you could leave one or two over and then they'll grow the ne next year. Like how, how long could you keep that going for? I, I, don't know. I have volunteers, potatoes coming up in places, but I try not to do, let them go too many years in a row because then, um, I think that is going to make critters. The so yeah, no critters, but um, the, you're going to get um, blight. What do I want? Yes, a blight. Yeah, the soil will have something in it that uh, will have a blight. So if you're if you rotate, you, you won't develop that. But if every year there are potatoes in the same place, either because you keep planting or because there are volunteers every year, you're going to end up with blight. So better to harvest them all. And I think Jim mentioned when he had some grade schoolers over, they, they got every single one out. So if you need help harvesting your potatoes, find yeah, some young I had the ultimate. I have the ultimate potato diggers <laughs> or grubbers as we call them. It's called second and third graders. You turn the ground over and get out of the way. <laughs> and they find every potato that's there from, could be a quarter inch in diameter and they find them. Did you grow to Sarah this year or no? You just do sweet potatoes, right? I think. Right. They haven't, they're shipping late this year. We haven't put it, we, we buy slips. Sweet potatoes right. are another thing. You can grow your own slips, but we're not that adventuresome. We buy the slips, but we will be growing them. No, and, minor in, uh, minor in pots. If you haven't checked the weather forecast, uh, I saw uh, for, for Friday evening, something mm -hmm. like 42 degrees oh. predicted. So I would put sweet potatoes out under those conditions. I think they would be harmed uh, if it's 42. Yeah. And uh, also if you're trying to germinate corn, corn likes it pretty warm. Yeah. And that may knock, knock out the corn germination for you as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just been a crazy season. It is. No, they, they're shipping. Usually they ship the sweet potato slips 
May 15th. And this year, the Buller Guard, the ones that are most popular, no one had. And everyone was shipping the, the slips the end of May. So they haven't even shown up yet. We got ours. Yeah, we got ours yesterday. So uh, from Johnny's? Um, no, I forget who we got it from, but um, one of six different places that we order from. <laughs> right. They'll probably, I mean, they'll show up this week. While we're talking about tubers, maybe I can jump in and tell everybody that I'm growing something that I'm so excited about. <laughs> um, it's American ground nut, also called oh. hotness. Has anybody oh, heard of that? The whole plant is edible. It grows these um, underground tubers like a potato. And apparently um, the Native Americans really tried cultivating or they did cultivate um, this particular wild growing plant. And you can obviously then eat the tubers. It grows really, really tall, up to 10 feet tall. And you can eat the blossoms. They bring lots of um, birds and you know pollinators to the garden. Um, they grow on, what do you call it? Um, are they ray themes when you think of a wisteria? Is that the right, is that the right word for the flower structure? Michael, you probably know that. I don't know that one. <laughs> no, no, I think it's a raceme. It's the flower structure of maybe Jim knows. Jim, do you know? I don't know. No, I'm not. Anyway, so not, uh, flowers... not the flower expert. <laughs> no, no, okay. And then they do make pods, edible pods too. And I'm <laughs> so excited about this. They were sold out all over the internet. People are trying to price gouge the few that is available on Etsy. $70 for, you know, three tubers or something. But I found um, a website called uh, Permies or it's a it's basically a forum for permaculture folks that like to hang out and talk all things yeah, permaculture. I know that one. Yeah, yeah. So I found an old thread from like literally years ago and I just happened to post. And of course, when you do that, it reactivates everything. And somebody said, hey, I got five. I'll charge you 15 bucks. He sent it to me. I put them in the ground last Friday. I'm watering them. Action, you're just like act actively watching that bed and praying over it every day. So probably by the next Zoom garden plot, I'll have some pictures of them just maybe sprouting through the soil. I'm so excited. What are they called? It's called Hopness, H-O-P-N-I-S-S. -S. Oh, ground nuts as well, right? You could do also ground, called? American ground nuts. And I can um, look it up on my phone and I can put it in the text if you want to ser uh, search by the botanical name. Now, did I'm did you get the actual nut or you got like a tuber? I got five tubers. Yes. I, I, I actually ordered, I have the nuts. Apparently, nuts. apparently, so it's, it may be something different that you have. Chad. Oh, maybe. Yeah. So the American ground nut or yeah, the American ground nut is different to like a peanut. It doesn't actually have nuts in its um, growing. Oh, let me see what I have. At all. It's, it's a tuber, a plant, a flower and a, and a seed pod. And apparently they're terrible at, um, propagating from seed. But I can throw it in the chat if I find out what I called it, what I searched for. I just typed it in and there were pictures all over over YouTube on them. Aren't they pretty? Ah, it's, they're called APS Americana. I'll put that in the chat. While there's this little interlude here, I just want to say one thing about the potatoes. Um, I have heard that if you get a child to harvest a potato, that child will grow up to be a gardener because it's so much fun. And so I, Jim's getting all those second and third graders ready to be the next generation. It's wonderful. Oh, no. You know what? I Here, I got, I have them. I certainly have. You have them? Those are them. I'm afraid to plant them, though. I've been reading about them. Like, could, could they be invasive? Um, you have to corral them according to the permaculture experts, yeah, because they will grow really tall and really fast and they will spread. Our like a sun choke. Favorite. Yeah, oh God. Sun I still have Bill Bill give me one I won sun, sun choke, choke. <laughs> at a meeting years ago and now I probably have like 30 growing and, and you know and, and last year I probably got a hundred from it. It's like they just don't stop. 
So that's, that's what I'm afraid of, like putting it in and just like, what? Could you put it in a raised bed or something where it's constrained? Thank you. I, I, yeah, I was like nervous. I have it even like, I got it. I, I ordered mine from Interwoven Permaculture Farm. Cool. In uh, Illinois. Yeah, some people grow it up their water spout. Some people grow it up a tree, something really tall. And then I think it likes wet soil or? Uh... Um, I don't know about wet, but they do like a lot of sun, I hear. Yeah, I probably don't have enough vertical room for it, but we'll see. I'm just- All right, you inspired me. I'm gonna put them in the ground. Definitely, now's the moment. I have a question about strawberries, if, if it's okay. Yes, no, no, I have no other set question, so ask away. Okay, so I heard uh, that strawberries are only good for three years, and I didn't think that that was the case. I thought that you got a strawberry plant, and as long as it's alive and producing strawberries, then that's fine. But is that true that strawberries only produce for three years? We've had strawberries for years and years. I don't know how long. I, I don't even count the years. They, they send out runners. Are they still sweet, or have they gotten really oh, tart and inedible? They're fine. They're, they're the fine. same as they the same ever were. As they always were. They, they send out runners. They just make new plants. So mm -hmm. what you can do is you, you can take out the old plants that have really produced well, and then let the, the new ones produce for the next year. Um, you can do that. Um, I'm just not very efficient about doing that. <laughs> so I just they they usually are are just totally dense in the bed by the end of the summer. And I just go through and I thin them out a little bit. And I don't know which ones are which, but we have a lot of strawberries on our plants this year. We have so two. I was planning on getting them for a combination of ground cover and just to build a patch. But someone was like, you're going to have to get new strawberry plants every year because they're only good for three years. And that was just insanity to me. I never heard of that. No, no, it, it, it wouldn't. It would be at least two years, maybe three. But but we just don't bother with that. Um, <laughs> I did, I did buy some new strawberries about, was that two or three years ago? Maybe even longer. I wanted, I wanted bigger strawberries. I have relatively small ones, but they're delicious. Um, so there are a couple of brands. Sparkle is the one I really like. It's, a, it's not a very big strawberry, but it's very prolific and it's very sweet. It freezes well. And uh, Jewel is also a very good strawberry. I can't remember the name of the new one that I got that's bigger, but the, the new one that I got is nicer because it's a taller plant. So it stays up more off the ground, you know? Uh, so if it's a bad slug year, for example, um, that one does better. Um, do you remember the name of that strawberry? Do you cover them with row cover in the winter to keep them, to keep them warm or do you just no. let them go? Straw, no, they, they, they need to be mulched. That's why they're strawberries. <laughs> Put straw in them. <laughs> Um, and then as a matter of fact, we, we take the straw off, let them warm up, start to, you know, get blossoms and berries. And then we mulch them with straw again, because they, you don't want them to get too dried out. So, but not a lot, you know, we mulch them, mulch around them, but in the winter, you actually cover them up with the straw. Mary, mm -hmm. how, how far apart do you send them out to? Uh, depends depends on how energetic I am. I mean, you can have them like eight inches apart, ten inches apart. Mine are usually closer than that. Okay. Um, I think maybe when that happens, though, I start getting fewer strawberries or smaller strawberries. But you know, I figure if I get enough, I I had. Well, I didn't last year. I didn't have such a huge crop last year. But I've had you know 40, 40 quarts, 40 quarts, 40 bags whatever, yeah, yeah. Of, of strawberries. Um, how many plants? That's a lot. I mean, that's how many I freeze. That's not how many we eat. <laughs> so yeah, we're we eating eat, them every day. <laughs> we eat them and then, and then we freeze. But how like, many plants year, would you say? Uh, sorry? How many how plants, plants would you say? Well, it, it covers an area of about 25 feet by three foot bed. So think about two every eight inches or every 10 inches. And we have two beds of them. So that's, a, yeah, we have a lot. It's a lot of strawberries. It's, but so, start, I started with 25, you know. So I put my strawberries in with my blueberries because I figured I'd have a berry patch and they both like acid. Do you think I'll have to cover the blueberries in the winter as well? Or can I just let them die back and go for it? No, they, they like mulch too, though. They, they have very shallow roots. And so in the summer, you want to mulch them because of the 
so they don't get too dry. And in the winter, you want to mulch them, you know, because of the extremes of temperature. So, so the mulch that I've been using so far is actually pine needle, fallen pine needles, because it's a high acid and they like the acid. So, yeah. so far, it's what I'm using. Yeah, I, that's supposedly oak leaves, too. Uh, we put oak leaves because we get those from our son, who has a big oak tree in his yard. Um, Thank you. Any other Thank questions? You for Thank you. Any other questions anyone have? No, I was going to ask what type of strawberries, but you said sparkle and jewel. <laughs> Sounds sparkle. like Disney movie. Yeah, um, very, very color, right. very uh, sparkle and show, jewel. show tunes. <laughs> yeah, um, I could look up what that other one is. I do not remember. Um, yeah, if you if you can look, I have. Is this a good time to plant them? Because I ripped out all my strawberries last year because I didn't, it was a type that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. um, so I, is, should I plant them now if I can find them? Yeah, I don't know if you can find them now. Uh, they don't, it's hard to get them to, to really get established if it's too hot. Mm -hmm. Spring is probably the best time, but it's getting, getting kind of hot. It is technically still spring, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. But, you know, you, I mean, you could, you know, you could try it, but I mean, um, if you keep them well watered, yeah. um, it takes a year before you you, really... you won't get any strawberries. The first right. year, you I don't know get that. Any yeah, I know that. Yeah, and, and it's not that they won't produce them, but if they get blossoms, you actually have to pinch the blossoms off. Oh, so pinch them the first year. Yeah. Okay. What happens if you don't? Well, you're not going to get plant. very many good strawberries the next year. Yeah, the plant will not. Be it's, as healthy. It's getting dark. I'm going to turn on the light. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, uh, there we go. And do you do you have to feed them anything special? Uh, yeah, I do. Them, yeah. I, yeah, I do. But we use blood meal and bone meal. Um, and I also sometimes use liquid fertilizer. I used that um, chicken soup for the soil last year. We all have also used. Um, fish emulsion and you know things of that sort um and then we got we got from bill green we got some uh some old manure that we put on in the fall and so that's you know just kind of it just looks like mulch now essentially on the strawberries thanks speaking of fertilizer has anybody tried making comfrey tea or nettle tea as a fertilizer. Chad, do you have, uh, are you growing I'm, your own comfrey? Yes, I have, I'm, I just, you know, we're on the same page, right? You got ground nuts. I, uh, yeah. yeah, I have comfrey in my backyard and then I cut it down. And now I, uh, I'm letting it soak uh, in a bucket with water for a, for a week or so. And then I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to put a little bit of that in the, mix it with water and I'm going to have that as a, you know, comfrey tea. I've heard that it's a fantastic fertilizer. I have one sorry little comfrey plant that accidentally got mowed. So I was scrambling <laughs> around for all the leaves, putting it in a bucket. Will come back. I yeah, yeah. It, it, it's very, I, yeah. I cut mine down and it comes right back. Right I have too many comfrey plants. And actually you should come and dig a few of them up. You'd be most welcome to take them and mine will come back bigger than ever. And you would have as many comfrey plants as you want. I have so many comfrey plants. Oh, come and get them I'm if you want them up on that because I just love that idea of making my own fertilizer and this one little plant it's very sorry yeah especially has a lot of you know it's very nutritious and... yes. I, I've got so many I, I got a bunch of them and I sort of chopped them all up and I fill a wheelbarrow and I you know chop 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 and make them small and I'll use them like to mulch an area with mix them with some like proprietary or mix with straw and, and leaves proprietary huh? I'm not going to tell you the exact ratio uh, um, yeah. um, and then um, but some of them were were so big they were going to flower was, some had white flowers some had purple flowers and the the buzz 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 of the bees on them was just so intense I was just happy to leave the so so I've got some that I chopped down and used for mulching and fertilizing the soil and others that I just let grow for the the bees and the, yeah. but there's so many of them back there if you would come in, in and cut out a few you'd be but again it's going to grow back but you'd be most welcome to take some 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, I might. <laughs> you know, Michelle, you can, we have a big one over in the community garden. It's, it's been growing for a few years. I let it bloom because it is really pretty, but you can cut it back and you can get like at least two, sometimes three growths a year out of it. Well, that's the tuber in there is huge now. I have one I put in my, one of my gardens of death over here that's barely alive like yours. And I brought a hunk over from the garden this year and put it down in a bucket of mulch. It's growing like crazy. <laughs> Why is it called the garden of death? <laughs> because you know, my house is very old and there's spots in my yard that are toxic from God knows what. So I just move plants around until we've got coal ash, we've got shingles, <laughs> you know. It, it, sounds like a, it sounds like a plant horror movie. Well, yeah, 1885. They used your your yard was your dump. <laughs> I thought you meant like the Ford plant. I thought you were on maybe on that Ford land. <laughs> no, I have my own. God knows what's in the in the soil. Just keep moving it. <laughs> well, maybe uh, maybe Michelle could bring home some of her pill bugs. <laughs> yeah, That's not a bad idea. I was just thinking that. Thanks. Well, the fire ants seem to survive fine. <laughs> what? Fire ants? Fire ants. We have those little ants? red ants that bite you. Oh, we don't have those here, do we? I don't think they're not. The, they're not the ones no. from Texas, but I have some. There's one type out there that you have to be really careful in the summer. You're down on your knees weeding, and all of a sudden. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cornell's guide. Resources. Yeah, this is um, the one that Michelle offered uh, last time. I, you know, I should try to look up some more research, the resources in uh, Jim Hall we have here is a wonderful resource and they, uh, right, they have a card. They have a garden helpline and uh, uh, email. That I uh, posted last time. Let me see. I try to put that somewhere. Oh yeah, maybe if you could put that in the chat. It's eight four eight four five three four three zero six six four. That you could talk to a garden uh, Cornell Extension Master Gardener. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, nine thirty to twelve thirty p.m. April through November. So that's Can a wonderful that service. That's it's eight. eight Eight four five three four three zero six six four, and uh, it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, nine thirty to twelve thirty p.m. Any time other than that, leave a message. Right, and they'll get back to you, and you could ask about hill bugs and ground nuts and all that stuff. I have another resource. Maybe I should have sent it to you, Chad. But um, I went to the Orange County Arboretum just this past week and I don't know if folks have been there. Yes. So mostly flowering plants, but I think they do have a vegetable section and the folks there are so knowledgeable. So um, I was very surprised at this. That's, that may be some of the master gardeners. Yes. They, they may be master gardeners. There's a lot of them that work out in the Arboretum. Yes. And um, as we were checking out, we uh, you know, had questions for some folks and they were just all jumping in with answers. I was like, wow, I love this. Had to restrain myself. Rick wanted to go and volunteer. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that's beautiful. They have, a, they have a sale that's going on now for it's um, not vegetables. They're vegetable selections, but not that much. But for if you're into you know, containers, flower, container flowers. I make a haul of plants there about twice a year. It's a great sale and it, it um, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of their yeah, fundraisers. Yeah. Thank you. There's right. about a hundred master gardeners in Orange County alone. Mm. Sorry, Sarah, what did you say? Where is the sale or what is it? The Arboreum. And where's the Orange County Arboreum? It's up is in- it um, Montgomery at um, Thomas Bull Memorial Park, and you just follow the signs for right. the gardens. There. The third entrance. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
It's a little confusing, but you have to go. Now you, you have to make an appointment. You used to be able to just go. Maybe it's changed this week, but you go online and you it's free. You get a ticket and you show it up at a certain time. And I think it's still going on. But it's it's not really vegetables. It's for your, you know, flowers. Yeah, they have a wonderful nine one nine eleven exhibit. Uh, oh, it's beautiful. Globe. Beautiful. And uh, it will probably change back it's just because uh, Cornell just opened their offices this week so they're now allowing the master gardeners to come back in so you can see a lot more places that are starting to uh, right. fully open back up right well, well thank you everyone very much uh, next plot will be Monday June 14th um, and uh, I don't, are we going to stick with 730 or 8 uh, well I guess we'll let you guys know as the people, as it stays late, uh, as it stays light later out, we want to let, we don't want to rush people in from the garden. But thank you all very much. I somewhat survived uh, without too much chaos, and I appreciate it. And uh, this will be posted in uh, probably by next week. And thank you for your contribution. Bye bye. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Good night. Happy gardening. Bye bye.